So the baptismal candle is filled with symbolism. First of all, the flame of the candle represents the light of Christ shining out into the darkness of the world filled with sin and sickness and suffering and death. At the Easter Vigil, on Easter, the night before Easter, the whole church, the lights are turned off and everyone has a candle in his hand. And as the Easter candle is brought in from the outside, having been lit at a fire outside on the, on the porch, on the sidewalk outside, then one by one, all the people in the church light their candles from this candle and the light spreads through the whole church and illuminates the church. It's a symbol of the fact that by means of baptism, each one of us is enlightened by Christ and everybody that we come into contact with, we enlighten them by means of this light that's been given to us. So that's the candle, that's the uh, flame of the candle. The candle itself is made of 51% beeswax. The reason for that is that at the Easter Vigil hymn, the so-called exultet, the first word in Latin, which means let us exult, let the church exult, let the church rejoice that Christ has been raised from the dead. This candle, as the flame illuminates or, yeah, illuminates the darkness, the candle is used up like a sacrifice. And the candle then is a symbol of Christ, who, is, who by shedding his light to the world, was used up as a sacrifice for us, giving himself away. Now why beeswax? Why 51% one, one, uh, beeswax? Because in that hymn, Mary is referred to as the mother of the bees. So we can say that as Mary gave her substance, she gave of herself, her physicality, to give Jesus his physicality, his, his human body, his human nature, so the bees give of themselves to make the wax that makes the candle. So Mary and the bees are connected by this image of giving of themselves to make something else. Mary gives of herself to make Jesus, the bees give of themselves to make the wax of the candle. The candle also typically has five grains of incense. These symbolize the five wounds of Christ, two hands, two feet, and side. And the reason that these grains are of incense is that in the Psalms, the, in a couple of places in the Psalms, they speak about or sing about offering the sweet-smelling smoke of incense as an image for our prayers rising up to heaven. So as the sweet-smelling smoke of incense rises up toward God, so do our prayers during the Mass or outside the Mass rise up to God. The incense grains are a symbol of Christ's divinity because in the Old Testament, incense was only used in the worship of God, being burned in the temple in the Old Testament, in the Jewish temple. And in the New Testament, in the New Temple, in the church of today, we also use incense at the Sunday Mass or at funeral Masses or at wedding Masses to, to um, symbolize our prayers rising up to God like the sweet-smelling smoke of incense. Each year, when the Easter candle is born, you might say, it's baptized in the baptismal font at the Easter Vigil, after the singing of this hymn, it's given its, its um, numerals for the year, 2017 in this case. Here we have a picture of a cross and a white, um, how do you say, cloth decorating the cross symbolizing the resurrection, the purity of the resurrection, and the letters, the Greek letters, Alpha and Omega, the first and the last letters of the Greek alphabet. In English, we would say the A to Z, because in the book of Revelation, Christ identifies himself as the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. In other words, the A to Z, the everything. Christ is the everything. Sometimes you have other uh, symbols that connected with the Easter candle as well, but these are the primary ones. The flame, the light of Christ, the candle itself, Christ himself, the incense, the divinity of Christ and his wounds, and the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end.